You guys clicked on this video because you want to know what is the best page builder. I'm sure you visited forums and Facebook groups asking what's the best builder and just got conflicting answers, leaving you guys with more questions than answers, right? I've been using WordPress for about seven years. I've had my fair share of really crappy page builders, but also some page builders that were really good. So in this video, I'll give you guys my experience of what I think are the best page builders for WordPress. For each of these builders, I'll give you a quick history of the builder. I'll also give you a live demonstration on how the page builder works and talk about the features. Next, I'll talk about the price. Price is very important when it comes to builders. There are some freemium builders and there's some ones that you have to pay to to get access to. And for each builder, I'll give you my personal verdict on what I personally think about the builder and who it's for. I'll also give you my personal recommendation on what builder I personally use and recommend. I also do realize that my audience has sort of evolved into two different types of audiences. We have beginners and business owners, and then we have full on web developers. So in this video, I'll share page builders for both audiences. I'll show you guys page builders for, you know, the average Joe Schmo, and I'll also show you guys two page builders that I think are great for web developers. There are links to all of these page builders in the description below of this video. Also make sure to like this video. Yeah. All right, cool. Let's take a look at the first builder. First up, we have Brizzy. Now, Brizzy was created by Demi and Sergey, who wanted to create a more user-friendly WordPress page builder. Brizzy quickly gained attention for its easy-to-use drag-and-drop builder and also its sections. It was probably one of the first builders to introduce sections with a page builder. The company has had a slow growth over the last two years, but it's still actually a pretty solid page builder. So this is Brizzy. You guys have probably heard of this page builder. This is actually one of the more intuitive page builders to use if you guys are a beginner or if you guys are a web designer. Now, if you guys do want to access this plugin, all you got to do is go to the back end of WordPress and then simply type in Brizzy right here and you guys can access this free page builder. So this is the page builder that we are going to show you guys right here. Once you guys activate the page builder over here under pages, if you click on all pages, this is where you can activate the builder. So if I click on edits, it'll take us to the back ends and uh, up here, I'm going to go ahead and go to back to WordPress editor. When you guys install the page builder, you'll see this edit with Brizzy, and this will actually let you build the website with Brizzy. And unlike a lot of the other builders, this builder really focuses on uh, sections and stuff like that, right? So you can actually pick a lot of different sections. They also have a light mode and a dark mode for all their sections, which I thought was really cool. They also have two different types of kits. They have this uh, sort of like modern style kit, and then they have this more elegant style looking kit. This was actually the first kit that they created when they came out. And then later they introduced kit two. They also do have other kits right here as well. Um, they also have other layouts. So they have full fledged layouts. Most of these are pro, right? There is only probably like nine free, but uh, the rest are actually uh, in the pro version. So uh, yeah, but it works like this. You guys would go ahead and click on a block and then you guys can go ahead and add a block right here. So I'm gonna use kit two right here. So to get started with, let's go ahead and use, let's see which one should we use. Let's use this one right here. So this is how you guys would edit the page with Brizzy. On the left side, you'll see that if I click on the plus icon, there's elements and you guys can drag and drop these elements onto the page. For example, I will go ahead and take the button right here and I'll just drag it right here. And then you'd click on the element and this is where you can further design the elements. You can click on this and then change the color to any color you'd want. You can also change the alignment. You can also change the fonts and the color and also the size of the element. So you guys do have full customization with all of these elements, right? If you guys want to get rid of something, I can right click and I will delete it as well. Also, if you guys ever want to adjust the padding, like you think this is too big, you guys can actually take this and drag it like that in a really cool, easy format, right? Now, let's say you guys want to make a new section. I'll click on the plus block, but this time I'll create my own, right? I don't want to just, you know, keep using theirs. So right here, I'll click on the plus and then I will put in a row, right? So I'll drag and drop a row, right? And then we have these two blocks and then you simply drag and drop elements onto those blocks, right? It's pretty straightforward. I think even a kindergarten here can make a website, right? So I'll take the text and we'll drag it here. Then we'll take an image and we'll drag it there, right? And I'll go ahead and upload an image here, right? Put an image here. I will put in this image of this ice cream. Okay, there we go. And then I'll finish this off with a button right here, right? And that's it, right? And then also, if you guys do want to design like the entire back end of this section, you guys can click on this section here and then you guys can change the color, right? So 
Uh, for example, over here, we have an overlay color, right? Or you guys can add in like a background image and stuff like that if you wanna go that route. Now, really quick, I'll go ahead and delete that and I'll just add in one more block right here. Now, what's really cool is if you guys go over here to the reorder blocks, you guys can actually reorder the blocks for this page builder. So you can take them and move them around like that and build your website literally with pre-made blocks. I mean, they've made it in a way where it's almost foolproof to build a website. You just click on a block, you keep going, right? I do like the way they have this built right here. Um, also, if you guys do want to try one of their preset styles, you can click on this and this will actually change the entire website to some sort of different style, right? So the designers over there at Brizzy like created these pre-built styles so you guys can go through those and get some ideas for your website. So overall, you know, I do think that this page builder is actually quite simple to use. And if you guys do want to use one of their pre-made templates instead of blocks, which I don't know why you'd want to do that, you know, but uh, here under layouts, if I click on free, you guys can insert one of their free templates. So I will go ahead and insert this one right here. And one of the big caveats with this builder is they don't give you like the full shebang. They just give you like a one page template. But uh, overall, you know, the experience is fast. You can see everything loads very quickly. There's not a lot of loading time. There's no, um, oh, there we go. But uh, that was fine, right? And then here you would just go ahead and, you know, adjust anything and then also add anything you guys want here to the actual page. So overall, I do think that Brizzy is a solid page builder. I personally don't know why this builder hasn't grown more and, you know, had more active installs. It has been on the increase, but it's a very slow growth. And I'm just curious as to why this is, because I personally think this is a great builder. I actually recommend this builder to my friend's wife, who she's an accountant, and she actually used this to build her accounting business, and she doesn't know anything about websites. So um, she's a total noob, right? So if uh, she can do it, anyone can do it. So now let's quickly talk about the price really quick. So they have two options. They have Brizzy Cloud, which is self-hosted by them and then you have brizzy wordpress and this is just the plugin right i think most people would just use the brizzy wordpress you guys can use the brizzy cloud which essentially means that they will host it on their platform if you guys do want to take a look at it you guys can i think it is a little bit too expensive so for example for the year for the uh, brizzy cloud and if you want like the agency which is 10 installations that's going to be somewhere around 689 dollars now just reiterate here they do take care of the hosting for you guys so that is one thing to consider but let's just talk about the brizzy wordpress plugin so over here we have brizzy wordpress and here you're going to see the plans are drastically different right so i think the best suitable option actually for people who are you know just building basic websites is the freelancer this will allow you guys to actually use this on up to 25 websites for about hundred dollars if you guys are an agency i think this is a great idea right here for the agency or even the white label right here where you guys can install on 50 websites or 100. So I think the pricing with Brizzy is actually quite fair. If you guys are new to WordPress, I would definitely consider the freelancer plan. If you are an agency or better, I would go with agency or the white label plan. So now let's quickly talk about the pros and cons. The pros is this is a very intuitive builder. It has all of the features that you guys need. It comes with a theme builder. It comes with a mega menu builder. It comes with all the advanced features that you would normally get with any page builder. So overall, it's very simple to use. The only downside with this page builder that I personally don't like is when you guys are building your website and you click on something, you're gonna notice that this screen on the left side typically blocks your websites. And if you want to actually take this and drag it onto the website over here, you, you can't. You have to actually put it over here and then close it. And then you have to sort of move it around to where you wanna go. So this was the only caveat that I found with Brizzy. I hate how they have this thing blocking the website. Hopefully they change it in the future. Maybe they watch this video and they let me know, uh, hey, we can change that in an update. But this was probably the only thing that I didn't like about the builder. But overall, this is a solid page builder for pretty much any beginner or any business owner. So what's the verdict? I would give Brizzy a solid B+. This is ideal for most beginners and also business owners. I think for web developers, they might want to use other tools, but for the average person learning how to build a website, this builder is great. Next up, we have Divi. The Divi theme was developed by Elegant Themes. This was initially created by Nick Roach back in 2013. It was like the best WordPress theme for the longest time. They first started with a backend only builder and then gradually introduced their front end visual builder. This took the WordPress community by storm. Divi honestly had no competition and at one point was the leading page builder for WordPress. Divi to this day is still one of the best builders you can use with WordPress. I also found that most women tend to favor Divi more than any other page builder. 
Now, Divi's going to be really tricky because Divi's actually going to replace their entire builder like within the next month. So I'm actually going to show you guys both builders. I don't know when Divi's actually going to transition to their new builder, but I'll walk you guys through both of them. So here's the current version with Divi. Now, this may change in the next six months, but typically if you want to add something here, you can click on the plus and this will bring in a little menu. And here you can basically add an element, right? So you'll put in like a, you know, you can add in a button right here. And uh, you'll see when you add in the link, it will actually appear. So I'll click on the check. Now, very similar to other page builders like Elementor, you guys can copy the style, right? So I'll right click on this, copy module styles. And then over here, I will paste the module styles, right? There we go. And the same thing, if you guys want to add another element, you guys can just go ahead and add it in there. You guys can also drag and drop elements. So if you wanna take this and put it below the button, you can do that. If you wanna take this top button and drag it way below here, you can also go ahead and do that as well, right? Now, if you guys ever wanna create a new section, it's actually really simple with Divi. You click on the plus icon here and you'll click on whatever section you want. So you can have full width, specialty or regular, but I'll just click on regular. And then here you can pick like a three column row, right? And I'll go ahead and close this and scroll down. So now we have three columns, right? And then instead of actually dragging elements on the left sidebar, you just click on the plus here and that pops up the elements. So the first one I'll add is a text, right? So we got a text module, right? And over here, we'll put in an image. Now they also do have AI integration as well, where you guys can use like AI images where you can generate images with AI. Um, I'm on their demo website, so I can't do it, but um, this actually does integrate with AI. So you guys can create AI text, AI images, and also create full sections with AI as well. And then again, right here, I will, you know, put in one more thing right here and I will drag in like a, or I'll put in a button. And then over here, instead of actually, you know, tell you what, I'll actually duplicate this, right? I'll duplicate this and I'll drag and drop this down here. And then I'll just delete this button, right? Cause I don't want to have to style all over again, right? So I'll go ahead and uh, delete that. There it goes. And then here we can change the position of this under the design. So for the alignments, I can put this to the left side, right? To the middle or to the right, right? So for every element, there are three different tabs. You have the content. This typically controls the content of any elements. Then you have the design. This will control like uh, where it is and also the style of the button. And then you have the advanced. The advanced typically control things like padding and margin. You can add in really cool motion effects. You can add in conditions, visibility, and a lot of other uh, options. There's actually a lot of stuff they have. Like um, I think also for their scroll effects right here, they have like a bunch of like really crazy ones, like where you can change like how the element actually looks. And you know, there's so many options that these guys have, it's crazy, right? And then what's really cool is you guys can like duplicate entire sections, right? So if you wanna duplicate the entire section, you guys can go that route. And then, you know, you can, you know, drag and drop elements like this. As you guys can see, it's really simple to use. You know, it's a drag and drop builder. The only thing I would say is you guys can see sometimes that when you drag an element, it's hard to see where it shows up, which is, you know, a very common flaw with Divi. But uh, if you guys want to, you know, change the image, we would go ahead and upload an image here. And we can just grab one of their image libraries and so on and so forth, right? Now they also have full on pre-made templates as well. So if I click on down here, and I believe it is this plus icon, there it goes. They have tons of layouts that you guys can pick from. And what's really cool is these guys have like over like, look at this, over 1200 layouts. It's insane. These guys have so many templates that you guys can pick from. Now, the only drawback guys, I personally think is some of these templates aren't the best design, but who cares what I think, right? You guys get free templates, it's a win. And what's really cool about this builder is if you guys click on this, you guys get like the full shebang. You get the, you know, you get the homepage, the service, the blog, the contact, the services, you get all the pages that typically uh, correlate to that specific design. So they don't leave you hanging, which is actually really cool. So if you want to import a template, you would just go ahead and say, all right, I want this landing page right here. Uh, you would click on it and then click on it, use this layout, and then it'll import this layout onto your website. Here, I'll import the presets. And here we go. And voila, look at that. So you guys now have a beautiful website where you guys can just go ahead and edit yourself. Like Daryl Wilson is cool, right? 
and so on and so forth. Now, this is going to be replaced very soon. I don't know when, it could be three months, it could be six months, it could be a year. Divi has not given us a time frame of when they're going to introduce their new builder. And now let's talk about the newest builder they have coming out. So this right here is Divi 5.0. This is going to be the new interface with Divi. And this typically works the same way. You guys can tell it does look very similar. But uh, for example, if you want to add in an element in between these elements, you just click on the plus icon right here, and then you guys can add in an element. So uh, for example, I can put in something like, uh, I don't know, a button. If you guys can't find it, you guys can just type it in, right? Button right here, and then just click on button. And then here's your button. And then the same thing, you click on the button, module settings, but they've actually moved it on the right side instead of actually popping up over the website. This is actually a good thing because um, this typically won't block elements while you're building the website. So the same thing, you know, you have the contents, you have the design, and then you have the advanced, right? And if you guys did want to move this, you can just put this in the center and voila, okay? You guys can also still visually drag and drop stuff. So if I wanna take this text right here and drag it up here, you'll see I can do that. And as you guys notice, it's a lot snappier. It is a lot faster. So this is gonna be the new interface with Divi, right? And if you guys do wanna add in a new section, um, go ahead and scroll down right here. I'll click on the plus and then regular and the same thing, you know, three little square thingamajiggies. And then we can add in like text. All right, we got text and then we have image, right? And then also we have the button module. So it is going to be uh, released probably in the next, I wanna say coming months. There is no time frame of when Davy's going to release this. I will say this interface is actually a lot faster. I do like it. Um, instead of actually having like information pop up all over the screen, they have moved it over here to the right side, which was one of the biggest changes they made in their new updates. So now let's talk about the pricing. Now I'll be the first person to say Divi has the best pricing on this entire list. If we go over here to pricing and scroll down, you're gonna see that there is a yearly and also they have a lifetime plan. Now this actually does look a little tricky because on the left side, you'll see Divi, right? This is actually referring only to the theme. So only to what I showed you, right? However, they have other services like they have Divi AI, Divi Cloud, Divi VIP. I don't really use all of these. I think this is more for development teams or agencies personally. So I don't really use these. So if you guys just want the theme, you guys can buy it for $89 a year. And man, there is a lot of pop-ups on this website. Holy crap, <laughs> right? Elegant theme, stop the pop-ups. I can't even have a video, right? Uh, so, but let me show you guys the lifetime. So the lifetime is 249. And honestly, out of all the page builders, this is your best option because you will pay this one time and you can solve this on unlimited websites and you guys can use literally this one plan for your entire career, right? So you guys can actually install this on your client website. They'll give you support and they give you the option to have unlimited website usage. You'll see right here, they give you unlimited website usage, which no other company on this list offers. So this is an amazing deal. So I would definitely look into Divi. So this is actually one of the biggest pros using Divi is their pricing. So now let's talk about the pros and cons with Divi. I would say it's very simple to build a website with Divi. You don't need to have any prior knowledge and it's actually quite simple to use. Also, Divi's pricing is also really competitive. You guys can purchase the lifetime plan and install Divi on unlimited websites, which is another big pro. Now let's talk about the cons. If you guys do wanna create something like a directory website or you wanna create something very niche, I've always found Divi a bit clunky and hard to work with other plugins. For example, if you wanna build a directory website or a real estate directory website with Divi, I think there's other better suitable options. But if you just wanna make something like a basic website, e-commerce website, or a blog, Divi will work just fine. My final verdict, I would give Divi a solid A. This company out of all the companies has the best integrity. They've always looked out for all their customers, the support is great, and the builder itself is really simple to use. Next, we have Elementor. If you guys haven't heard of Elementor, you've probably been living under a rock. This page builder took WordPress by storm. It came out back in 2017 as a freemium page builder. Today, it is the most installed and most used WordPress page builder out of any other page builder. It has more than 20 active million installs and is the leading page builder right now for WordPress. In fact, if you guys go to ThemeForce, which is very popular for WordPress themes, most of these themes use Elementor as their standard builder. Very few themes actually use their own page builder. Avada does, Flotsam does, Massive Dynamic does, but more than 90% of these themes actually use Elementor as their standard page builder for their WordPress theme. Elementor, without a doubt, is the most popular page builder for WordPress, but I don't think it's for everyone, but I still think it's a very solid builder. Let me give you guys an example of how this page 
page builder works. So here is the builder. If you guys do want to go ahead and access Elementor here on the back end, you guys can type in Elementor and you guys can install it for free directly in the back end of WordPress. Now, the great thing about Elementor is that there are so many themes that accommodate Elementor. There are tons of templates that accommodate it. There are themes that accommodate it. Everyone pretty much accommodates Elementor. This is actually a quick sneak peek of our newest WordPress theme. So this WordPress theme is this, you know, we're soft launching it, but these actually have tons of demos for Elementor. You guys might see Astra as well, Bloxy. All these themes offer tons and tons of templates for Elementor. So uh, for example, I'll go ahead and import one of these templates here. And I'll go ahead and just change the colors here and I'll import this website. If you guys are curious about this WordPress theme, me and my team have been developing our own WordPress theme. We plan on actually uh, creating this around Elementor. So this is why I'm showing you guys the theme. It has tons of demos for Elementor. We're also gonna create blocks and a theme builder and all sorts of crazy stuff for it. But uh, I'll make a whole nother video about that. Uh, right now it's still in like alpha, I guess. There are some things we need to work on. Okay, so as you guys notice, when you import a demo with usually any WordPress theme, you guys are gonna see the website has been propagated. Now, most people might assume that this is actually being propagated by the default WordPress editor, Gutenberg, but that's not the case. So here at the top, when you guys install Elementor, you guys can click on edit with Elementor and design your page. Now, Elementor works by adding in elements. So for example, if you want to drag in an element right here, you can take this button and then drag it onto the page and voila. And it's very similar to the other builders. You guys can take elements and drag them and drop them. And then when you see that little pink line right there, that's where you guys can drag and drop the elements, right? So you can let it go. And you guys can do this throughout your website. So if you wanna take this and move it over here and take this and move it over here, uh, it's a very fluid, simple to use drag and drop builder. Now, when Elementor first came out, it was definitely for beginners, right? That was like their user base. But over the last five, six years, Elementor has drastically evolved. And I would say Elementor is no longer for beginners, but it's more for like the average web developer, web agency. Uh, I'll let you guys be the judge. So Elementor now has containers and grids as their standard layouts, right? And as beginners, this can be a little confusing. So uh, if you guys want to rearrange elements within a column, you'll click on like vertical or reversed and uh, all these different options. Essentially, Elementor gives you a lot more control over your website versus other page builders, but at the cost of having a higher learning curve. So let me show you guys how this works, right? Let's say you guys wanna add a section right here. So I'll click on the plus. And here we have three options. You guys can add in a column, use templates, or use their AI. Personally, I think AI with web design is just, it's very hard to use because they don't really know what you're looking for. And I found that when I use AI for websites or when I see users use it, typically they're gonna spend more time trying to fix it than actually give them good results. I mean, that's my experience with it. Maybe in the future it'll be better, but I still think it's at its beginning phases of web design. So here I'll choose a layout and here we have Flexbox and we also have Grid. Now Flexbox can have a learning curve. So essentially right here, you guys have different structures. Now these two right here, I'll probably save for another video, but that's essentially where you can add an elements inside a box and then uh, manipulate them to your liking, right? But uh, just for tutorial sake, I'll just use a two column row, keep it very simple, right? And for example, if I wanna drag in a heading right here, you see we can change that, like Daryl Wilson is cool, right? And then what we can do here is also throw in an image, right? Put in an image right here below that. We can change this image, right? So we'll just put in this guy right here. And then we'll throw in some text, right? We'll put in some text below that. And then here we can throw in a button uh, below that, right? At the very bottom, right? And then also we can duplicate uh, rows and columns. So right here in this container, let's say I don't wanna do this all over again. I can simply go ahead and right click and duplicate it. All right, really simple. So uh, as you guys can see, you know, it is a very uh, fluid to use drag and drop builder. However, I will say though, that the Flexbox and the grid, there is somewhat of a learning curve. Like I do have some videos showing you guys how to use it. However, once you guys can get past like the grid and the flex box, it's really not that difficult to learn. However, it is a learning curve. You will have to spend maybe an hour or two with it and then, you know, get the hang of it. So let's take a look at this section here. You know, if you guys do want to adjust like the background here, you guys can click on edit container. And for every elements container in row, there are three tabs, just like every other page builder. There's the layouts, there's the style, and then there's the advanced, right? So with the style over here, we can go ahead and change the background right so what I can do here is change this background to this color you guys can also make this gradients 
you can add in a video or even add a slideshow background, which I think would be a little crazy, you know, I think so. So I will say that Elementor is probably one of the more innovative products. Um, I think this has probably the most features out of any other page builder on this list. The number of features, I probably cannot list in this video. It has, um, it has custom post types, it has dynamic content, it has a theme builder, a loop builder, it has an e-commerce builder, mega menu builder, it is nuts. So they have a lot of features packed in here. So I think when learning this builder, just just expect to actually sit down with a builder and explore the features. It's not as grab and go as the other page builders, but overall, I think it's a very stable product. So next, let's talk about the pricing. Now, Elementor has a history of constantly changing their pricing probably every single month. Um, they also have a history of reducing features on their plans, which sucks, but uh, let's go ahead and go to their pricing. So if you guys do want Elementor Pro, over here, you'll see page builder. Pro plugin. They also have hosting, but I'm not uh, I'm not going to talk about their hosting. I haven't really used it, so I can't really say that it's good or bad. But here you have a few different plans. Now, essentially what they've done here is they try to disguise these pricing by per month instead of uh, the actual price. So before, this was $59, $100, $200, and $399. That's what these actually cost cuz if you actually go to buy now and you go to their cart, they're going to charge you $100. Uh, for this plan. So you'll need to look at the actual pricing below the per month to see what it actually costs out the door. So this right here costs $100, right? So they have a few different plans, right? They have the essential. The essential plan is useless. Do not get it. Uh, it actually doesn't give you guys all the features. I'm actually really against the company making plans like this because what they're doing is they're making these pro versions and stripping it away. They're trying to convert, they're trying to get money. I get it, you know, but at the same time, I think that if they pay for something, they should get all of the features. Here you have the advanced plan, which only gives you access to three websites. I think the expert plan is probably the best option for you guys. This gives you access to uh, Elementor Pro and you can install it on up to 25 websites. If you guys are an agency, this is definitely your best option right here, where you'll pay $400 and you guys can install this on up to a thousand websites, right? And right here, you guys will see what they give you, but uh, typically the advanced or better, you get all the features with Elementor Pro. So next let's talk about the pros and cons. There are some huge pros and cons with Elementor. The pros is you guys have a very fluid drag and drop builder with a variety of options. Out of all the page builders, this definitely has the most features. The features range from Flexbox to Gridbox to a loop builder to a mega menu builder and a lot more. It also integrates with custom post types and tons of other themes and plugins. This plugin is best suitable if you guys wanna create a niche website like a multi-vendor e-commerce website or a directory website as there are tons of add-ons for this page builder. Now, one problem with this page builder is it does have a learning curve. If you guys don't have time to learn a builder, well, this might not be the best one for you. Elementor constantly changes and keeps adding in new features, and it's really hard to keep up to date with it, not unless you're using it every single day. If you guys don't use the builder often, then you'll come to find the interface also changes quite often. Over the last year, Elementor has changed their interface about three to four times. New features are constantly introduced that have a steep learning curve, so this can be quite annoying for someone who doesn't use the page builder on a regular basis. I personally don't even know who Elementor's audience is anymore. It's definitely not for beginners and there are better options for full-on web developers. I would say their audience has to probably be in the middle. It's probably like web agencies building websites, but I don't really think beginners adopt this page builder as easy as other builders. And web developers typically don't like using page builders because they're kind of weird. But uh, yeah, I would definitely say it's for the average web agency. What's my verdict with Elementor? I would give them an A+. I think they've earned the reputation as the best page builder for WordPress. However, keep in mind, if you're a beginner, there is a steep learning curve, so just expect that when you're using the builder. Next up, we have SeedProd. You've probably seen this page builder all over the internet. That's because the company that owns this page builder also owns about five or six blogs, and they pretty much only write about their own products, which can be downright annoying sometimes. SeedProd started off as a coming soon plugin that would display a coming soon page or under construction page on your website. It was later acquired by a company called WP Beginner, and it eventually turned into some sort of page builder. Over time, people use this on their websites and it became a little bit more than just a typical landing page builder. Now, the identity for this plugin is a little confusing. On one hand, they market themselves as a landing page builder or an under construction plugin. And on the other hand, they brand themselves as a full-on website page builder. They really need to get the story straight here. 
So before I talk about this product, I do want to explain some things that might cause some confusion. So if you guys go to the backend of WordPress and you guys try to install the seed prod plugin, what happens is this actually only gives you access to create an under construction page or a landing page. If you guys actually want to build full on websites, you'll need to go to seedprod.com and then you'll need to actually buy the pro version. So I know the uh, one right here in the back end looks like a page builder, but uh, it's actually not, right? So if you guys do want access to the page builder, here are the pricing options. So they have a few options and I personally think the best one here, uh, personally, I would have to say is probably the elite. That's because it gives you access to 100 websites. So if you're an agency, that's a good plan. But if you are like the average Joe Schmo, I think something like pro would be the best. The reason why I would not recommend basic or plus is because these actually don't give you access to all of the features, which I think is a really crappy move on this page builder's part. But regardless, if you guys decide to use this page builder, let me show you guys how to use it. So I'll go ahead and paste in my license code and I'll click on verify key. Once you guys do that, then you guys can actually use this to build websites. So over here, I'll go to add new page. And here at the top, you'll see edit with seed prod and I'll go ahead and give this page a name and I will turn on the builder. Now, for some reason, after you do that, it prompts you over here to actually upload a template, but uh, I'll just click on a blank template. So this is pretty much how you guys build websites, right? You guys can click on these columns right here. Now, I would say that this is actually for beginners and maybe business owners. It's a lot more simpler, less features, and it's pretty more, It's I would say it's more compact. So over here, you would just, you know, drag in a headline, right? Here, I'll throw in, an, you know, an image. And then over here, we can throw in a button, right? Just like that. And if you wanna drag and drop these elements, you can obviously take these and drag them around. Now, I will say this builder is actually really fast and snappy. You know, it's actually much faster, I would say than Elementor or Divi. So if you actually take a look here, I can just, you know, quickly drag and drop it and it just falls into place really quickly. If you guys want to adjust an elements, you click on any elements. And then here again, you have three options. You have the contents, you have, I guess right here, they try to make it simpler, right? You just pick a style, right? And then here you have the advanced. Now the advanced is actually a little different. So they took the styling options and they put that in the advanced section because they want to make users uh, pick something really quickly. So they're going for ease of use right here. So this is their target audience. It's for, you know, the average beginner. And then here I'll put like buy now, right? Buy now. And of course uh, I can change this to, you know, Daryl Wilson is cool, right? Daryl Wilson is cool. Let's go ahead and change that there. Sorry, you know, I'm not illiterate guys. I got the microphone in front of my keyboard. Maybe I'll change that one day, you know? And the same thing guys, you guys can duplicate elements. You guys can take them and drag them and stuff like that. Now, uh, when I first used seed prod, I had low expectations, but uh, I would say that this builder is actually really fast and snappy compared to its competitors. And I hate to say that because I don't like their pricing options, but at the same time, I have to be very honest and say, wow, this builder is pretty quick. If you guys do want to create a new section, all you got to do right here is click on the layouts. And then here you guys can go ahead and drag and drop elements. So let's say for example, I want, I want to create like a landing page or something like that. Now what's really weird here is I swear this looks just like Divi, right? From earlier. And then now it changes back to something else. I, I don't know what that's about, right? But here I'll throw in an elements, right? We can put in a, uh, let's see, here we go. Change this to white, right? Change that to white. And then over here, I can put in some text, right? Drop some text right there, change this to white. And then I'll click on the elements here, go to advanced, and I will change the color, right? And then I'll just throw in a button here just to finish this off. So this is essentially how we can create, you know, some sort of like, you know, landing page, I guess. Now, another thing that I wanna show you guys is this builder actually has blocks as well. So if I click on add a section, you guys can actually start building stuff by blocks, right? So if you want to start with a, a little section right here, you guys can select it and then go on your way and you know add an element or you know throw in a button here and stuff like that. And if I wanna add in something else, I can go ahead and insert this and so on and so forth, right? So I would say that this is actually a pretty solid builder. Uh, the first time using it, I was actually surprised on how fast it was. I have seen it on the internet and after I use it for about like an hour or two, I would definitely say this builder is more suitable for beginners or people who have like a, you know, mom and pop shop who just want a quick website.
So I already did talk to you guys about the pricing and I had to because that's actually how you have to get the plugin. So I personally recommend if you guys do wanna get this plugin, you guys should probably get the Pro. And if you guys are an agency, I would definitely recommend the Elite. I would not recommend the Plus or Basic because you don't get access to everything that the Page Builder offers. This company does have a history of being over aggressive to its customers. If you guys do use a lot of their elements, you guys are gonna notice that they actually install a lot of these other uh, plugins here that you guys will have to pay for. Essentially what they're trying to do here is they're trying to get you guys to actually use all of their other products and they hide these inside the page builder. Well, I don't mind this. I do think that this is really spammy and annoying and you guys can expect to get tons of marketing emails from this company. Now, another really cool thing that I want to talk about with seed prod is the fact they offer a lot of really unique elements. Unlike a lot of the other page builders, they rely on third party plugins to offer these, but this company actually has a lot of these really cool elements inside of their page builder. So you don't have to install third party plugins to get things like, you know, a, uh, a before and after or a login form or something like that. They have everything built inside of the builder, which I thought was actually pretty cool. Now, another thing I want to point out that might be a little bit controversial is the reviews. The reviews for this product are highly rated. However, if you look at the reviews, most of the people are actually giving five star reviews for this page builder being a good under construction mode plugin or a landing page builder plugin. That's because these people aren't using this as a page builder. They're using it to build a under construction for their websites. The pro version does not have a review system, so it's hard to tell what the market thinks of it. I do know that this plugin is declining on active installs. It did have more than a million active installs, and as of right now, it has about 900,000 plus. Overall, it's a decent builder with good features and it's a very fast and fluid builder. It's geared for mostly beginners and business owners and I think it's a pretty solid page builder. I would give this builder a B plus. So next we have Spectra. Now Spectra is not really a page builder, but it's more of an add-on page builder for Gutenberg. Gutenberg is the default editor with WordPress. And I'll be very honest with you guys and lay my cards on the table. I personally don't like Gutenberg. You guys probably already know this. I've used it and it is a bit clunky. It's not innovative, it's hard to use, and it feels like it's a builder made 10 years ago. However, it is still a good thing that WordPress does offer a page builder for its customers, right? It's better than nothing, right? So uh, Spectra is more of an enhancement for Gutenberg to make it more usable. Okay, so you guys can install Spectra in the back end right here. So if you guys type in Spectra, you'll see Spectra WordPress Gutenberg blocks. So this is the plugin that you guys will need, right? And once you guys do that, it basically creates a more enhanced version of Gutenberg. So for example, here I'll go to plus page and let's just say this is my home page, and I want to design a home page. So like the other page builders on the front end, this is kind of the front end, right? It's the back end front end. It's kind of weird, right? But uh, here I'll click on the plus and let's say for example, I want to create a container. So here I'll select a container and then I will select a three column row, right? There we go. And right here, I'll click on plus and this is where we can also add an elements. So for example, I'll add in heading right here, right? And then this is heading, okay. And let's say I want to also drag in something else below that. Here, I'll click on add a block and then image right here, right? And then I will throw in an image. So you guys can see it sort of replicates some of the other page builders in a way. Um, I think this was actually a great thing to add, right? Uh, let's see if I can actually click on the plus again right here. There it goes, plus and then button, right? And then here I will put in a button, right? And then here I'll put in like, you know, buy now, right? Now, what's also cool is you guys can go ahead and insert their templates. So over here under the design library, uh, for the pages and the patterns, you guys will need to sign up for their AI thing. I'm not a really big fan of the whole AI thing because what they do is they try to get you to use AI, but you have to consistently buy credits to use the AI and it doesn't give you what you want. So you have to keep buying more and more and more and it doesn't really work long-term. Sorry for the guys over there at Element, or I'm sorry at Astra. I love you guys, but uh, I'm just not a big fan of the whole AI thing. Uh, but you guys can use their kits, which is actually really cool. So you guys can use any one of these kits. So I'll click on this and then I'll click on insert template. And then you'll see it actually imports the template right here and you guys can go ahead and, you know, change this to whatever you guys want. And this is an info box. So if you wanna add something below this, all you gotta do over here, there it is, click on the plus, and then you can add in something else in between that. And over here, you'll see that uh, you know they have an image and you guys can move this below it, right? I, I There it goes. I really hate how it shifts the whole screen. It's just, I don't know, just something about it I don't like, right? As you guys can tell. Now, I, I really praise the guys over there at Astra because this actually, 
fixes Gutenberg to make it usable, right? So imagine this with no uh, rows or columns. It's a lot more complicated. But uh, overall, I do like Spectra. I think if you guys do want to use Gutenberg, I think you guys should use this builder because it really does enhance the way you guys build websites. So here is Spectra.com, and this is where you guys can buy the page builder. Now, typically, you guys really only need the free version. I'll be very honest. Um, the pro version does give you a little more, but it's it's hard to say if it's worth it or not. I, I hate saying that because I want to support you know Spectra. I want them to make money so they keep making products. But at the same time, it's hard to really say like, do you really need the pro version, right? So uh, here you guys can select annual or lifetime, right? They have a lifetime plan. And then you can also select the number of websites. I personally think the lifetime for 10 websites is probably the best option because with one website, it's only 199, which is, I mean, only, it's, it's kind of expensive, right? But for 10 websites, it goes to 279, right? Now in the pro version, you guys get access to a loop builder, a pop-up builder, and also dynamic content. This is really only suitable for people who are in web agencies or developers. If you are like at the average Joe Schmo, you probably do not need any of these features. So if I were looking at this and I were to go with one, I would probably go with Spectra Pro. All these plans are typically the same. So the Pro version for Spectra Pro gives you access to most of the features, the custom blocks, and the extensions. However, the essential kits will give you access to all other premium starter templates, which could be a game changer. So if you want all those templates as well, this actually will give you access. You also get access to priority support. If you guys do want to go with the business toolkits, this will give you access to everything and also give you some other plugins. I'm not really sure about these plugins. I haven't really used them, so I can't really say this is a good deal or not. Uh, it looks here like they are limited limited or these are lifetime right here that's good but these right here are only six months so it's really up to you if you want to get their other plugins as for my verdict i would give spectra a solid b i think it's the best attempt to make gutenberg a decent page builder it's actually kind of sad that most of these plugins come out to enhance the experience of a page builder that's already supposed to provide a simple experience if you guys do want to try the default editor with wordpress gutenberg i think this add-on is your best option so those page builders, I think, are suitable for most people building a website. Also, if you guys run your own agency, I think it'll work just fine. Now, if you guys are strictly web developers and you guys want to work with developer tools, here are two builders that I think you guys might like. Next, we have Bricks. The Bricks builder was created by two developers back in 2020, and it actually has grown in popularity. The founders wanted to address the needs of both developers and WordPress veterans who wanted to build websites with WordPress. They focus on creating a visual front editing experience where you guys can see the changes in real time. With Bricks, you can develop WordPress websites with more developer-friendly tools and even create your own elements. Since its launch, Bricks Builder has continued to evolve with updates, new features, and they even have a roadmap on their website if you guys want to check that out. Now, the cool thing about Bricks is you guys can try Bricks for free. So if you go to their website, bricksbuilder.io, and you click on Try Bricks, you guys can enter in your email and they will create a sandbox environment for you guys to try Bricks. So here is the sandbox environment with Bricks. And the very first thing, if you click on Bricks, they have this little welcome wizard. So here you guys can actually go to their academy and they'll teach you guys how to actually use the builder. Over here, you guys can create your own templates and you guys can reuse those on various websites. Now, if you guys are a developer, you guys can create custom webhooks, filters, and even create your own elements using Bricks. And they have developer documentation to help you guys out. And then right here, if you guys want to send them a nice little letter, you guys can get in touch with them or even offer some advice for their future roadmap. So these guys are constantly developing new features for their builder. Now, if you guys do want to make a page over here, I'll just go ahead and click on add new page. It's very similar to the other page builders, right? So this will be like the testing page, right? Here you'll click on publish and publish. And at the top, I'll click on edit with bricks. And this will turn on the page builder. At the top left up here, we have some developer tools where you guys can adjust the classes and also variables. And here we have some general settings like theme styles. Here's their help. And then here is where you can add an elements. Now, first off, for these layouts right here, they are all using Flexbox by default. But if you do want to adjust those to something like uh, inline or if you want to use grid, you can actually do that. So I'll first add in a section right here. And I'll go ahead and delete this. I don't know why that popped up. So here we have this section. And for the layouts, I'm sorry, for the content, here's where you guys can, you know, get further in the development section of WordPress. So for the display, you guys can obviously change this from Flexbox to Grid or to Block. Or if you want to inline elements, you can strictly just go to like inline the block or inline and inline those elements. But let me just give you guys a crash course here. So I'll first go ahead and throw in container right here. So now we have a container in the section. 
and we are going to drag in some elements right here. Now, I know it's kind of hard to see, but that's why I like using the right side so you can see that we have the element inside of the actual container. One drawback is they should really, you know, add in like a second line right here so you can actually see the section and the container in the section. But uh, anyways, so over here, we'll go ahead and throw in an image below that. And then here we can throw in a button. Here I'll just throw in a random image right here. Okay, so here is my image. And I'll make this a little bit smaller, right? We'll make this just a little bit smaller, way too big, right? So the next thing I wanna do is I want to actually make this full width, right? You see everything's a little scrunched together. And I wanna use Flexbox to manipulate these elements inside. So over here under the container, we're gonna go down to the style and we're gonna find the min heights and we're gonna put 100 VH. Right, and now you're gonna see that the container itself is full width. That is the settings for uh, you know the full page. And then from here, you guys can obviously use the flex box to manipulate, manipulate the elements inside. So uh, for example, we could put this in the centered and then also we'll change it to the center as well. And then here we can go ahead and change this like a welcome to Daryl Wilson agency. Okay. And um, what we can do here also is, I think we need to make some space in between these elements. So we can add in some, you know, column space and row gap. So I'll just throw in like something like a background, right? So I'll just throw in a random background color, right? Just throw in a little blue, right? But, uh, you know, I think uh, we should probably add in another container because I want to end line the buttons right here. So I'm going to take this button here. I'm going to drag it in that container. I'll duplicate it, right? And then from here, we can use the flex box to manipulate the elements. Let's get rid of this image. You know, this is not working out, guys. All right, something like that, right? So this would be like for a landing page or something. Obviously, you can see I'm building the structure here. Uh, we'll go over here to the content. And this is, again, where we can use the flex box to manipulate the elements inside. We'll also place that in the center. And then maybe we can add in some like gap like that. And then this can be like, you know, something else or whatever. So. So this is a very quick overview on this builder. Obviously you guys can see, you guys can edit the HTML tags, you can add your own div lines, you can make your own elements. This is a full on developer tool. And it does also have tons of styling options here where you guys can get really nitty gritty and develop your WordPress website. Now, if you guys wanna clear something, all you would do over here at the top right is you would say, I want to go ahead and remove all and so on and so forth. Now the pricing I think for this product is actually really fair as well. So they do actually have a lifetime plan and this is $5.99 and that is a one-time payment and you can install it on multiple websites. It is about double the price as Divi, but since it's a development tool, I think that actually makes the most sense. If you guys are an agency and you guys just wanna test this out for the year, you guys can go with their agency plan for $249, which I think is also a very fair price. However, I would not get the business or charter just because this is very limited. I mean, one website, three websites versus unlimited, that is a huge difference. So if you guys are an agency who wants to test out Bricks, I would definitely recommend the agency or better plans. What's my verdict? I would give the Bricks Builder a solid A. I believe this page builder really does bridge the gap between adding the simplicity of page builders, yet also integrating development tools at the same time. Next up, we have the Breakdance Builder. Now the Breakdance Builder came out in about 2020, so it's been in the market for about four years. The developer originally created a builder called Oxygen and then later worked on another project called Breakdance, which actually got a little bit more attention. It is a developer tool mainly used for developers building WordPress websites, but it is actually pretty innovative and simple to use. Breakdance does have a free version, but it's only available on their websites. If you guys do want to try out the free version, go to their website and download it, and then you can install it on your WordPress website. So here is the interface with Breakdance. And let's say, for example, you guys want to add something in, you'll click on the plus icon here, and then you'll get a list of elements. So here we have the basic elements. We have the blocks. We also have, you know, tons of blocks. We have some site options like, you know, the header builder. And then we also have some, you know, advanced and forms and stuff like that. So if we want to get started right here, I'll click on the uh, columns. We'll drag some columns in. And then here we can pick a column structure. So I will pick a three column row, right? So we got three columns right here. Now on the left side, you'll see that we have some options to adjust the column. So we can adjust the layouts. We can also change the size of the column as well. And then also we have some spacing option where you can adjust the column gap in, in between these columns. But uh, let's say for example, you guys wanna add in an element, very simple to use. You'll just click on the plus. Here I will throw in a heading text. All right, so we'll put in Daryl Wilson, all right. And then below that, I'll click on, or first I'll click on the add right here, and then we're gonna throw in an image, right? And here we're gonna 
drag in this image. And then here we'll put in an image of Daryl Wilson, right? So we'll put this guy here, right? And then below that, maybe we can add in some more text and then like a, a button or something like that, right? So here we go. One thing I do like about Breakdance is it's actually very snappy and quick. You'll see the elements really just like pop into place, really simple to use. Now, one thing also is if you guys do actually want to uh, adjust the elements, you guys can actually click on the column right here and then you guys can actually manipulate the elements inside like a flex box. So right here, we can align this to the centered and then also vertically center as well, right? And if we want to add in some space in between these elements over here in the layouts, we can add in some space just so like it's not so suffocating, right? So uh, yeah, pretty simple to use. We can also duplicate this and duplicate that. Over here, I'll actually delete these and voila. We now have a beautiful three column row that we just made in a few seconds. Now, this is very similar to bricks in some ways, right? So they do have this structure on the right side. You guys can also go ahead and you know check your history and they have preferences and global styles on the right. But uh, it is a little different. I think it's actually a little bit more simpler to use than Bricks, but I will say it does have less options than Bricks when it comes to development, right? Now let's say, for example, you want to add a new section over here under section. I'll take this and drag and drop it right there. Okay, and then right here, I'll just, you know, throw in some heading text. Okay, and then over here, we can, you know, throw in some more text below that. And then, you know, it's like throwing a button. And then obviously we can actually use this uh, layout right here to manipulate the elements inside to, you know, to, to adjust and stuff like that. So I will say that this builder is actually a little bit more simpler to use than Bricks, but it definitely has a lot less features and options than Bricks. I will say, you know, Breakdance is, brings like a simplicity to it. Now, one of the only drawbacks that I feel with Breakdance is I feel like the options can be a little confusing on where to find. For example, if you guys want to adjust the actual section right here, instead of actually putting it in the layout section, they put it in the size section. Now, personally, I think that this is the layout itself, right? Like this is actually where the layout is. So uh, creating an option for size, I mean, size is typically talking about the size of an element, but here they're trying to say, no, we're talking about the size of the section, right? But I think that should probably be under layout, right? But uh, besides that, you know, besides the options being uh, kind of placed in you know weird positions. I do think that this builder with practice is actually a really solid builder. I do think it has bits and parts of it that are actually some more simpler to use than the uh, bricks builder. But overall, you know, I think this is a great development tool if you guys are looking to get into uh, development with WordPress. So now let's talk about the pricing with Breakdance. Now, I think the pricing is actually fair, but I think it's a little deceptive on their website. So here we have the free version. That's very cool to have a free version so that you guys can test it out before buying it. Here you have the Pro, and I think this is actually just like a plan just to upsell their other Pro version. So I guess they have two Pro plans, right? So the first one will give you this builder on only one website. And then they have this second one for unlimited. So obviously they're just trying to upsell the other one with $200. I personally think that the amount of work that goes into these builders, $200 a year is a steal. You guys should see how many people they have working on these builders. That is one thing I kind of don't like about the WordPress community is they actually expect these builders to be really, really cheap but these builders actually have a lot of development work that goes into it. It is not easy at all. Uh, then they have their pro and AI bundle. I am personally not a fan of any AI builder on any website because typically what they do is they make you buy credits and you have to keep using the builder and then keep paying more and more money for credits, which I feel like sets everyone back and you're probably better off building your own website than trying to guess what this AI you know, tool is gonna give you, right? So personally, I think this plan right here, their pro plan for unlimited websites is your best option when it comes to value for money. What's my final verdict? I would give this builder a solid B plus. I will argue they need to fix the styling options and rearrange things on the left side. This could really confuse a lot of people using the builder for the first time. However, I do think this builder is on the right track and with some tweaks and modifications, it'll be a great development tool for building WordPress websites. So those are my recommendations and picks for the page builders. Now, if you guys are gonna ask me, you know, hey, I'm new to WordPress, what should I use? I would definitely go with something like Elementor, Divi, or Brizzy. I personally use Elementor and I also use Divi quite often. So I would say I really do favor those builders. However, each of them are actually really simple to use. If you guys are a developer, I would definitely check out Bricks or Elementor. You can't go wrong with either one of those. I think those are very suitable for developers looking to get into WordPress. 
I hope you guys enjoyed this video. You know, when you first start with WordPress, I know it can be very intimidating and you're not really sure where to go for a page builder, but trust me guys, I have used WordPress for a long time. I've used really crappy page builders. I've used really crappy themes, right? And uh, you know, I basically kind of narrowed this down to what I think is the best uh, option for people getting into WordPress. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to like this video and leave me a nice comment below and let me know what your favorite page builder is in the description below of this video. My name is Daryl and I'll see you guys later.